Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today is the third in a short series of review videos I've been doing on the entry-level fountain pens that I use on a daily basis. Up to this point, we've done a review on the fabulous Pilot Metropolitan. And the last video was the Pelican Twist. Both very modestly priced and excellent pens, which I use every day. But today, well, it's a pen that I've saved until last because it's one of my particular favorites. And it is, of course, the Lamy All-Star, a true superb performer. But as ever, let's talk about the origin story of the Lamy product before we get into the pen itself. Now the Lamy story begins predictably with a chap called Lamy, Joseph Lamy, who was in fact a Parker pen rep working in Germany. In 1930 he purchased the Orthos Pen Company. Now by the time of the Second World War that pen company were producing something to the tune of 200,000 pens a year. And in 1952, Joseph changed the name from Orthos to Lamy, giving the company his name, the Lamy Pen Corporation, as it has remained from that day until this. And it's still in 100% family ownership. And in fact, Joseph's son, Manfred, who took over from the original founder only in the 1980s, um, he died in 2001. And as I say, you know, just goes to show the lineage of the company is just three generations deep. And Lamy still producing fabulous pen and other writing instruments right up to the modern day. Now they produce a number of things, not just pens, but uh, roller balls, um, notebooks, uh, ballpoint pens, as well as, of course, what we're here to talk about today, the fountain pen. So, you know about Lamy now? Let's talk about the Lamy All-Star. Now, the Lamy All-Star is an absolute stalwart of the Lamy collection of pens. And in fact, at the startling price point of 20 to 25 pounds, you know, this is a superb offering uh, and a, an excellent beginning for somebody who's thinking about embarking upon a fountain pen journey. Um, as the name might suggest, the All-Star is made of aluminium or aluminum if you're watching this in America. Uh, so it gives it quite a, um, a metallic feel which elevates it above a pen which bears a striking resemblance to it and that is the Lamy Safari which looks almost exactly the same but is constructed of ABS plastic and the Safari it is claimed is the most popular fountain pen in the world but the Lamy All-Star um, because of that aluminium construction as I say makes it feel a little bit more classy and a little bit more robust. Now Lamy produces the All-Star in a number of different colours. Some are quite vibrant and exciting, others are a bit more conservative and restrained. And every year they produce a special edition colour. It's a great idea if you're a pen company and you want people to buy more pens and more pens. So this particular model I'm holding in my hand is the 2017 special edition, which is in Pacific Blue. Uh, I've owned this for something over four years now, and uh, along with its rollerball brother which looks exactly the same same color same finish um, so I can give you a good review having used this pen for something like four years on a day-to-day -day basis and the other one I have here is I think this is the special edition from 2020 or 2019 which is a bronze color uh, exactly the same in every way but just different color and I think to be honest you know for the price point you may struggle to find a better fountain pen of any brand anywhere in the world. So let's have a look at the Lamy All-Star. What strikes you when you pick it up? Well, first of all, you notice that it is a little unconventional in its appearance. It's a little edgy, a little innovative, somewhat modern. Uh, certainly very different to some of the more traditional fountain pens that we've already looked at in the series, such as the Pilot Metropolitan, which is the classic fountain pen cigar shaped. And in the uh, sort of vibrant colours which Lamy tends to produce these pens in, it does look a little more avant-garde than perhaps some of those traditional pens. Now in the hand the Lamy is light despite it being made of aluminium. It is only the, the thinnest 
aluminium shell which we have covering the plastic underbody of the pen. Um, what strikes you immediately is the rather large and oversized chromium clip which dominates the cap. That is although being you know perhaps not to everybody's taste to look at extremely functional and very good at securing your pen once in the pocket the other thing you'll notice when picking up the pen is that there is an aperture uh, in the in the barrel of the pen the main body of the pen which allows you to see the the cartridge or the converter which you have inside giving you an indication of the state of uh, ink within the pen so you know you may be aware that you're coming up to needing a cartridge change just puts it in the back of your mind. So quite functional, quite useful. Also when looking at the pen, you can't help but notice that the barrel of the pen is faceted on two sides, whilst the cap is entirely cylindrical. So it gives it, as I say, something of a different look, a little bit unorthodox compared to many of the fountain pens which you might pick up and find in general use around the world. Removing the cap, we reveal the nib where the rubber meets the road or the ink meets the paper when it comes to a fountain pen and Lamy produces a number of different size nibs depending on your personal preference. For me, I like a medium, I'm a pretty orthodox writer, uh, nothing special there and I find it writes in a very standard ordinary medium uh, fashion. Um, the nib is free-flowing, it never gets blocked, I've never had any problems with the nib burping or the ink flow being interrupted in any way or discharging ink in my bag or in my pocket when I didn't want it to. So it's very consistent, very reliable. Looking at the pen, we will notice that the pen grip is made of a translucent plastic. Not that it gives you any indication about the workings of the pen but it's just an interesting thing to look at. You will also notice that the uh, the pen grip is ergonomically designed to be gripped by the fingers in a certain fashion. It's got some facets um, molded into that grip. So it's fine for me, I have a very traditional grip of a pen, but if you have perhaps an unorthodox grip, you know, it's something to be aware of. It might not be to your personal taste when it comes to holding the pen. I've personally found this to be very comfortable and very convenient for quite lengthy letter writing sessions. I've always found this to be probably my most reliable fountain pen and the one which I will reach for when undertaking, you know, lengthy notes, uh, perhaps writing a letter or writing, you know, in preparation for one of my YouTube videos where I make notes in a notebook. Always comfortable, always works well. One of the advantages about the Lamy All-Star is that that nib can be easily changed. So if you buy one and you don't particularly get on with the fine nib or whatever, you can change it for the medium. It can be done simply, easily, uh, and these stainless steel nibs, you know, they're not going to let you down. They're going to go on. They're going to work forever. Now, opening up the pen to see the guts of it inside, quite a straightforward process. You have a good look at the shaft of the pen there. You can see that that aluminium outer shell is just over a plastic inner, hence it's quite light and that aluminium is, as I say, just a very thin skin. Inside the pen itself, um, quite straightforward. You can see the translucent grip, uh, which extends to be uh, to accept the cartridge. Now, in this case, I keep my Lamy All-Stars charged up with Lamy proprietary cartridges simply for comfort and ease. Um, I have one of my two pens always loaded up with, with black for just day-to-day -day use and then my other pen I'll have charged up with turquoise because that's the pen I like to use as my personal signature coloured ink. Um, and when I see a signature which I've signed in turquoise, I know for sure it's definitely come from my hand. Uh, quite straightforward to use and apply. The cartridges are fairly large. You, ca they, you can buy converters to go with them, which are really comfortable, easy to use. If you wish to use uh, more specialist ink, which I know a lot of people do. Me personally, I haven't caught quite gone down that rabbit hole in the fountain pen world yet. Um, I do like the convenience of proprietary cartridges, just makes it straightforward and easy for everyday use. So what are my final observations about this Lamy fountain pen, this all-star? Well, the truth is all of the hallmarks of excellent German engineering are present in this pen. Quality components, 
engineered to a fine degree of tolerance and then produced in a very effective, useful, reliable and functional pen, which most importantly writes excellently and is comfortable for, to use for hour after hour when you're sat at a desk writing or scribbling notes or doing whatever you choose to do with your fountain pen. I very much like the fact that along with the fountain pen, you can marry them up with you know, a rollerball which is a reliable, excellent little note taker as well for those moments that perhaps the fountain pen isn't appropriate. Or the ballpoint pen, all from the all-star range, which look good together uh, and you know, work just as well. So there are a lot of advantages to the Lamy All-Star in so much as it's an excellent fountain pen, but the little collection uh, also make it a formidable writing uh, system that you can employ in day-to-day -day use. Now I've been using this Lamy All Star for almost five years uh, and I have to say it hasn't let me down, it hasn't disappointed. I started off with this little Pacific Blue model in 2017 and then I moved on to, I think this is the 2019 or 2020 special edition in bronze, works just as well. So both these pens produced years apart, they're identical and they work excellently. Again, a good indication that the engineering is superb in the factory. Um, I have to say, for the price point, between 20 and 25 pounds, and you might even see them cheaper if you catch them on a deal or in a special offer somewhere, I think you will struggle to find a better writing experience or a better uh, writing instrument for that amount of money. Uh, you know, it's never let me down. And people always comment on them. You know, when I go to a meeting and I pull my fountain pen out, those little, the little vibrancy of the color of these, you know, these items always attracts the eye and people will notice that you're using a fountain pen and make reference to it. So, you know, it does have that impact to it as well. But all in all, an excellent fountain pen at a very approachable price. And if you're thinking about beginning a fountain pen journey, this might be the place to start. You don't have to gamble a lot of money, so if you don't like it, you've not spent a pile, but if you get on with fountain pen use, you need look no further than one of these, to be honest, you know. This is, although it's not the epitome of a fountain pen, there are far better ones out there, and people will relieve you of large sums of money for much more accomplished pens than this, but this could be the pen that you use for a lifetime and need look no further. So there we go. Those are my observations on the Lamy All-Star. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, I would be delighted if you give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, click the subscribe button. You won't miss any of our future material. And if you have any observations or comments about the pen or any other part of the work that we do here at the Chaps Guide channel, by all means, drop me a comment in the comment section. I'd be delighted to hear from you. So until the next time, Take care of yourselves, write well, and I will see you again very soon.